and aloha everybody welcome to buzzer beater episode four i'm jake mccleary with mick miller hope you had a good weekend mick and i had a good week we survived no crazy adventures except except for one mick you want to tell us about that one well when we off, went off the air on buzzer beater last week jake and i were walking out of the canada activities center and and out of nowhere, I don't think Bryce is watching this show, but Bryce Natras, my fellow classmate, if you're watching this, I want the footage of what you did to Jake and I. Jake and I were walking out of the CAC, and all of a sudden, some guy came up from behind me, threw a pillow at me, and started beating me with a pillow. Luckily, Jake, a great co-host on Buzzer Beater, came to my rescue, tackled him to the ground, and we repeatedly hit him with pillows. BYU Hawaii students, watch out for Bryce Natras in the Career Center. They're out to get you. All right, let's get right into the show. Buzzer beater today, we'll kick it off with women's volleyball. Yeah, that's our producer. Producer's coming in to give us our stuff. Mm. Women's volleyball, let's get right into it. Jake, they just got back from a road trip, four games on the road. It was a D2 regional tournament over in San Diego. BYU Hawaii goes 0-4. They're currently riding a four-game losing streak. They're currently 2-7 in 2015. Luckily, conference play has not yet started because it's conference play that will determine who makes it to the tournament and who doesn't. In 2015, the Seasiders started off 2-6. Now they're 2-7. It's kind of the same thing that happened last year. Talk to us a little bit about what happened on the road trip. So they went 0-4. But they didn't even win a single set in those games. A couple yep. sets they came close, but they didn't even win a single set. So yeah, they're writing a four-game losing streak, but they also haven't won a set in in those four games. They one of the losses came to Cal Poly Pomona, a team which we beat two weeks ago. And the, the only positive thing I think we could take out of this would be Brittany Waite. You know, we're always talking about the big three, Lacey yeah. Lang, like Adolfo, and then Tonga. But Brittany Waite really stepped up. She led the game one time in kills. And maybe we'll be talking about the big four sometime, not just the big three. But that's really the only positive that could pull out of this week. They really got to bounce back. The overall consensus that I got from most of the players when they got back was it was four games in which they completely want to forget, but they cannot forget because they're 2-7 and seven right now. The only thing going for the Seasiders right now is that conference play has not started yet because mm -hmm. it's really the conference play and the conference standings that will determine who goes to the PacWest Conference Championships. And then if you can win the conference, then you go on to the regional and the national ch tournament. So for BYU-Hawaii, they really need to start getting things together, two and seven. Last year they were playing pickup when they went two and six. So it's time to play catch up for the Seasiders. On to the next segment. We've got upcoming games in keys. Like we said, the standings are it's even playing field right now. No one's played a conference game in the PacWest Conference, but BYU-Hawaii will play their first game against Hawaii Hilo at the Canada Activity Center on Saturday. Talk to us a little bit about what the BYU-Hawaii Seasiders need to do to come out with a victory. Well, it's like what you talked about earlier. They need to forget the last four games, but also remember them, remember the feeling. They need to bounce back. That's the only solution they have to get again. They need to bounce back after losing four in a row. They just need to forget those and just play on. Now, the Vulcans were the team that cost BYU-Hawaii a trip into the PacWest Conference Tournament last year. Yeah. I think they need to be motivated and remember that. And also, get this, they just struggled on a four-game road trip. After Hawaii-Hilo, they will go back on the road for five games. So I think this is the most important game for BYU-Hawaii in the season because, first of all, it's the first conference game. Second of all, if you're riding a five-game losing streak going into another five-game road trip, it's going to be very hard for BYU Hawaii to bounce back. One one key that they need to really focus on is they need to get off to quick starts during the four game losing streak. That was not the key. All right, let's move on to men's basketball. The season is just around the corner. I think we're five weeks away from midnight madness. In 2015, BYU Hawaii went 15 and 12, 11 and nine in the Pac West Conference. Struggled on the road, just making it to 500, six and six on the road. The big storyline that happened at the end of last year. Head coach Ken Wagner, who was at the head of BYU Hawaii's men program and was also the athletic director, stepped down, he resigned. He recorded over 500 wins as a coach. They bring in Gabe Roberts, who was an assistant here. It's a lot of new faces. So far, what have you heard and what have you seen about the men's basketball team for 2016? They're excited, they're ready to go, but one problem that I've heard, you know, I live with a lot of basketball guys, and one thing that they're really worried about is is the big men. 
the center who's yeah. going to step up and the big men. They have a lot of new players like you talked about, a lot of new posts that are going to be playing down low, but none of them so far have really stepped up. And so we're, that's one area that I'm not really sure about is the big men down low. Yeah, talking about big men, the only returner that BYU Hawaii has from 2015 that played significant time in the post was Justin Park. And I talked to Justin just the other day. He had an MRI on his knee. He went knee to knee with a player just the other day in practice. He has not been practicing the last two weeks. He's the only experienced big man that we have coming back. He's only six foot five. Yeah. So big man is gonna be a real storyline for 2016. But the positives, you got Justin Yamzon coming back, yep. who arguably is one of the best point guards in the conference. Corey Lang, he exploded for 44 points, almost shattering the school record for points scored in a game last season. He's back. You've got Tanner Nelson. If Justin Park is healthy, I think they have core players that will lead them to victory. But also, it's injuries in the post in the in the preseason. You got Justin Park, who just got an MRI. Gabe Andrade also got an MRI on his knee on Sunday. So these early injuries not looking good for the Seasiders. It's not. And the athlete of the week is none other than Lacey Lang. Lacey Lang is the only senior on the team. She's a leader on this team. She's recently coming off giving birth to her first child. Congratulations to her and Corey Lang, who we just talked about, who's on the men's basketball team. Lacey Lang is our athlete of the week. And when we come back from commercial, we'll be talking men's and women's soccer. We'll be recapping the game that just happened this past week. And keep watching. I think I'm working. Hospitality is in short supply, and businesses hunger for college graduates who are considered genuine gold. One university seeks to change the world for the better. Join our students as they discover culture, business management, and the aloha spirit. Come gain real-world experience by working side-by-side -side with seasoned professionals and land your dream internship. Brigham Young University Hawaii's Hospitality and Tourism Management Program. 70 plus countries, 15 students per class, nine semesters. Make one epic adventure. HTM wants you. Careers are available. If you want a wonderful life and a great paycheck and a lot of fun, you should choose Hospitality Tourism Management. Welcome back to Buzzer Beater. I'm Mick Miller along with Jake McCleary. Women's soccer, one of the best teams that we've heard about in the preseason. They're finally in action. We've been able to see a few of their games. Last week they took on HPU. It ended in a tie, but Brenna Love came up with the one goal for the Seasiders that really saved the game. And HPU is one of those tough teams on the island, another rival school. What were some of the positives and negatives you took away from the game against Hawaii Pacific? It was a long game, you know, when it's a double overtime, we were there for a long time, the girls were there for a long time. What I liked is how they didn't let up. They started the game with a lot of energy, and throughout the two overtimes, they didn't lose the energy, they kept it up. They didn't get another goal after Brenna's goal, but they also prevented HPU from getting a goal as well, so I liked the energy. The positive that I took away was in the first two games in which they lost, they only had seven shots. In the game against HPU, they had 10, so that shows how their offense is being a lot more aggressive. And then yesterday, they went up against Chaminade, a slow start. In the first half, Chaminade led BYU-Hawaii 1-0, and in the second half, 
Coach Dumar was able to get them a little bit more motivated. Offense played a little bit better. Defense locked them down. We're able to score two goals in the second half and win the game. Positives that you took away from the game against Chaminade. So in the past two games, it's been 1-1, that tie, and then 2-1 yesterday against Chaminade. So we have a total of three goals on the season, and two of those goals have been by Brenna Love. So Brenna Love's been a positive. She's really been a leader stepping up on this team. There, She's a player that her teammates can go to, and it She's a player that her teammates are looking up to. So she has to continue to per perform like she has. She already has two goals on the season, and she's just got to continue. Yeah, she's a leader on that women's team. And for BYUY to have success, she's going to have to play well. Like our volleyball team, our women's soccer team is getting ready to go on the road. What are some of the keys that you have for the BYUY Seasiders to have success on the road? Because last year, they really did struggle on the road. They didn't have a very good record. I don't even think they made 500. What keys do you have for BYU Hawaii? I think it's the same key that I talked about last week, Meg. It's getting off to a quick start. Yesterday, they didn't do that, really. It was a slow start, like you said. They got down 0-1, to one, but yet then they came back. It'll take a lot of pressure off the girls. It'll be more fun if they can get out to a quick start and make the first goal. Yeah, I, one of that I have is, that you already touched on is Brenna Love's ability to get behind the back line. Uh, yesterday she did a tremendous job and she's got a series of moves that allows her to get into the box and once she's in the box she is very talented she has very good ball skills to put the ball into the net she also is able to draw contact whenever she gets into the box it seems like the defenders converge on her and she does a really good job of drawing contact which will lead to a pk and whenever she takes a pk i believe she's 100 percent in her career here at byu hawaii yeah, and the third key to success that I have is leadership. I touched on this earlier with Brenna, and the team has captains, but captains aren't always leaders. This team needs a leader, a player that all the that can like motivate the team when they get down, or a player that they can look, the teammates can look up to. A leader needs to step up, and I'm not sure if I've seen that yet so far on the season. Yeah, vocal leadership definitely is something that BYU Hawaii is in need of. But let's move on to men's soccer. Now, we were very excited for men's soccer to finally begin because women's soccer had like five games before the men's team even began. Their first game against HPU was one of the most exciting games I've seen. Jake McCray did not pause the play button that he started last year when he shattered the, schooling, the school record for goals scored in a season. Seven minutes in, he scores a goal. Two minutes after, he scores another goal, and BYU Hawaii takes a 2-0 lead. However, the Sharks came back tied the game up at two, went into double overtime, and neither team was able to score. What things did you like from the game against HPU? Yeah, dude, Jake McCray, I don't know if you know this, Mick, but he's kind of a big deal. Yeah, I think everyone in BYU who People I know is a big deal. know him. So, Jake, I don't know if you know this either. Last season, in the first two games, Jake had three goals, and then he ended up breaking the record. This season, in the first two games, he already has four. So he's on track again to break the record that he broke last season. So Jake's obviously been an upside for the soccer team this year. And also, in those two games, one negative that I could take it out, they kind of let up, like you talked about yep. in the HPU game. They kind of let up. They got those two goals right really quick. So in order for them to have success this season, they need to push it. They need to keep that energy up throughout the whole game. And yesterday, they played the Chaminade Silver Swords, and it was completely different. Complete slow yeah. start. It was 1-0 Sharks going into the second half. Then Jake came in the second half, scored two goals, and BYU Hawaii came away with the victory. They're going on the road as well with the women's team. What keys do you have for BYU Hawaii to have success on the road? Last season, again, our BYU Hawaii team seemed to struggle on the road. What do you have for them to focus on? It's exactly what I talked about with the girls team earlier. You gotta jump out quick. You gotta hit on them quick. Yesterday we got down 0-1, but yet we came back again. No. But it's a lot more stressful when you're playing down. If you hit them quick, if Jake gets going quick, and not just in the second half like we saw yesterday, it'll be a lot easier to win on the road. I think one of the keys that I have is the goalie has to be the quarterback, per se, yeah. on the field. He has to command that back line. Yesterday, they did a great job. The back line was solid. The goalie was calling out the back line, telling them where to go. There's communication, and that's why they played so well. Not so much in the first half because they did go down 1-0, to zero, but in the second half, they made their adjustments. They made the changes that they needed to make, and they came out with the victory. Another key to victory they have is, have you seen the Frenchman, Pierre? Yeah. <laughs> Him and Jake have probably one of the best connections between two players that I've seen on the men's soccer team. Yesterday, Pierre set Jake up in ways that 
I've never seen before because usually Jake just goes behind the back line with uses his speed and his skills and puts it in. This year he's got someone to get him the ball. The Jake Pierre connection, if they can continue to have chemistry and play well together, they will have a successful road trip and play well on the road. And our highlighted player of the week is Peter Puertas. Peter came here in 2012 and started as a freshman. He's a very talented player, one of the leaders, and he is a captain along with Jake McRae, one of the most talented players that we have on this team. He is taking a, he's making a lot of sacrifices because if he wanted to, he could average 10 goals a game. But he has taken sacrifices for the team. He's one of the leaders. And for BYU Hawaii to continue to have success, he needs to play well. One more break, and when we come back, it's college football time. second half. They got the win. They're in the tournament. BYU Hawaii, number one seed all the way, wins the regional title of the NCAA West. Great win for us. It was a nice win. We held our composure and uh, you know, we just were close down. It's tough to close out on the championship, but we did it. It's still surreal to me. Aloha, everybody. Welcome back to Buzzer Beater. I'm Jake McClear with Mick Miller. It's college football time. The talk of college football this week has been Lamar Jackson, the quarterback out of Louisville. Mick, what do you like about this guy? Well, first of all, take a look at the picture right here. He's hurtling <laughs> over a defender, and yes, he is a quarterback. He's not a running back, but... Based on his stats, you would think he's a running back. He is third in the nation in rushing yeah. as a quarterback. And he's not a bad passer either. The last game against Syracuse, he almost became the first quarterback in college football history to throw for over 400 yards and rush for over 200 yards. He had 199 yards, Jake. Coach didn't put him back in and let him get the record. But you're going to have to save him up because he's going to face his first real challenge of the season next this upcoming Saturday when they go up against Florida State. What I like about Lamar Jackson is he shows flashes of a lot of quarterbacks. One of my favorites, however, is Michael Vick. He has that type of athleticism, and he has an arm on him, so he's not strictly a running quarterback. So when they bring the blitzes, and defenses have done that in the first two games, he can actually sling it over the top, and he can connect with his receivers. Very, very impressive player. But again, first challenge will be against Florida State this upcoming Saturday. And a lot of people are talking about Lamar Jackson being in the Heisman run, but... I'm going to have to disagree and not say his first two games, who do they play? Like Charlotte and who was the other one? Syracuse. Syracuse. So we'll see what happens in week three. But week two was not like week one. Oh. There was a little bit slower games. It wasn't as entertaining. However, did you see the game against uh, Central Michigan's game? Yeah, I did. The Hail Mary, that was probably one of the most impressive plays yeah. that I've seen in college football. A guy literally catches the football, has, his, has the sense to hurdle it back to his teammate and his teammate makes a run to the end zone. Really impressive game. What games did you like in week two? You know, I liked the TCU game in overtime. They got upset by Arkansas in, yeah. or in overtime. And that was a big win for Arkansas. And we're really seeing a lot of teams in the top 10, you know, they're being challenged. A lot yeah. of teams, they didn't lose, but yet they were challenged. So I think in the next few weeks, that top 10 will be changed around a lot. It did shuffle after the week two. I think one of the teams that shuffled that really surprised me and you'll love this because I chose them to win the national championship was Clemson. Clemson yeah. has been struggling in the first two two games of the season and they have not played anybody. Yeah. The guy that I chose to win the Heisman, Deshaun Watson, is struggling. This week he came out and said the struggles for the Tigers so far this year has been his fault. He was so overhyped, I believe. Not overhyped, but he did receive a lot of publicity, the comparisons to Cam Newton in the preseason. Do you think that's getting to him right now? You know, I don't I don't think so, and it's not just him that's struggling. It's the whole Clemson yeah. team. You know, he's 
being a leader, he's taking the responsibility on him, but the whole Clemson team is going to have to step up. And there's a quarterback controversy in Baton Rouge right now. Yeah. LSU is struggling. They they got saved by their backup quarterback last week. Fournette did not play. Les Miles definitely on the hot seat. We don't know whether he will stick it out towards the end of the season. My bold prediction last week is he will be fired before the end of the year. All right. I will be a man, and I will admit this to you and to probably to our three viewers, which is your mom and my mom. My that sister. I was wrong a few weeks ago when wait, I wait, chose. Wait, wait, wait. Again? I was wrong when I chose Deshaun nice. Watson and Leonard Fournette as the Heisman hopefuls. It's okay. It's Through okay, the first buddy. two weeks now, I said, I did say this year is Deshaun Watson's year to lose the Heisman. <laughs> He's losing it for me right now. Four touchdowns and three interceptions in the first two games of the season. Yep. That's not what a Heisman does. Leonard Fournette, an okay game against Wisconsin, but his team did lose. He doesn't play last week. No one really knows why. I don't know if he's banged up or I don't know what's going on in LSU's football program, but Jake, I was wrong with my Heisman guys. But it's in okay, your opinion, okay. what what is what are you seeing in Deshaun Watson and Leonard Fournette in these first two weeks that's causing these kind of struggles? I believe it's just a, they're just a little bit rusty. It's a long season. I don't believe they're out of the Heisman run yet. They're going to have to work hard. The team's going to have to step up for them to get the Heisman. But it's a long season. They still have a chance, so you might not be wrong after all. We'll see at the end of the season. At least I was man enough to admit that I was wrong. But here's the thing that I have with Leonard Fournette. He has to carry that LSU football team because they have absolutely no passing game. My dad's going to hate me for saying that, but sorry. Tigers cannot throw the football. Fournette can't run. They are in trouble going into the postseason. Okay, week three Let's go. will probably be a little bit better than week two. What games are you looking forward to? Ohio State versus Oklahoma. Oklahoma was one of the teams that I picked at the beginning. I was wrong here. I picked <laughs> okay. them to win the national championship, and I was wrong. However, they might be looking to get some revenge against Ohio State this season. So Ohio State versus Oklahoma, that'll be one. And then another one is Florida State against Louisville, like we talked about. Louisville, Lamar Jackson will have his first test this week against Florida State. So those are my two games that I'm going to be watching out for this week. The game I'm watching out for is Alabama Ole Miss. It was Ole Miss yep. who knocked off Alabama last year. It was an upset. Now Alabama did have a new quarterback. They have a new quarterback this year. Ole Miss is one of those gritty teams. They play really, really hard. I think they have a really talented quarterback if he can stop throwing interceptions and fumbling all the time. This is a game I'm going to keep my eyes out for because Alabama, again, the number one team in the nation. A lot of hype for this team. I want to see if they can get revenge you on call Ole Miss. It, you calling the upset? I'll go with a bold prediction and say Ole Miss beats Alabama. Oh my Jake. gosh. No, 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 no. I got this. I got this. No, hold we on. We all hold watched on. the game. We all know what happened. There are a lot. It was a... <sighs> See, you can't even you... talk. So I'll take it from here. Jake was talking so much trash. Now, I am not from Utah. I have no affiliation with Utah whatsoever. Yeah, you have no right whatsoever. to give me crap about this game. But your Heisman guy, Taysom Hill, he didn't play so hot. BYU... Okay, let me ask you a question. BYU who I turn BYU Provo. <laughs> Sorry, I get my BYUs mixed up all the time. BYU turns the ball over six times. Three times. There were six turnovers. Utah had six oh, you, well, turnovers. You, oh, okay, okay, yeah. you're right. Six, Utah, that's even worse. Utah yeah. has six turnovers and you still lose. How does that happen? I, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Taysom Hill, <laughs> he led that team down on the final drive. They had that chance to win with a two-point two conversion. Didn't get it. I don't know what happened and I don't want to talk about it. Well, we'll take another commercial and I'll take care of Jake. When we come back, the NFL week one just ended up. Welcome to the Handshake Games. You've been chosen. Do you ever feel worried about applying for jobs? Do you ever feel unprepared? Sometimes you might just push off this idea until after graduation, or when you're a senior, or some future day. It is very natural to feel worried about applying for jobs. We all feel that way at different times of our life. We've brought on a new platform to the campus called Handshake. It's a mobile, modern platform designed to help you to transition smoothly into your career by providing you with multiple opportunities not only to discover employers and jobs and events, but to be discovered by those employers. You can get points for using the system by doing three simple things. First, log on and upload a resume. The second thing is by identifying your job interests. 
Once you've uploaded your resume and identified your job interest, submit your profile for review. Take photos with Yellow Chair across campus or anywhere that you'd like to take photos with it and post it online to social media with the hashtags BYUH, hashtag join handshake, and hashtag I'm ready. Win challenges. These will be random short notice games which we will announce through Handshake itself. Don't forget to attend our meetings every Thursday at 11 a.m. Successfully recruit an employer to join the system and you will win big points. The larger the organization, the greater the number of points will be given to you and to your team. Log on to handshake.byuh.edu today. Your account's already been activated. And remember, if you don't remember anything else, Thursday at 11, we're waiting for you at the next Handshake Games. May the odds be ever in your favor. It's finally here, Jake. Finally, football season is upon us. Week one just wrapped up. I love football. What was something that you enjoyed about week one of the NFL season? Not like college football, not as exciting, yeah. but it was a good week of football. It was exciting, and for the first time, I saw this today, for the first time in NFL history on the first weekend, there were four games that were decided by one yeah. point or less. So there were some exciting games, but me personally, I had a lot of my teams, my team, didn't pull out. Who's your team again? The Redskins. What happened to them? They lost. To who? The Steelers. Jake's favorite team. Big Ben, baby. Big Ben. I'm, I'm he gone, literally has nothing to say. All right. Well, we watched the, the Broncos-Panthers game. Yeah. Uh, a lot of discussions going on right now on Cam Newton and yeah. whether he deserves to take the beating that he's taking because through the years – the past few years, the NFL has made a lot of changes in the rules as how hard or where you can hit the quarterback. Whereas Cam is six foot five, two sixty. He looks like an offensive lineman, yeah, and he's taken a beating out there. Do you think that Cam is being treated unfairly? I I do, and I think it happened. The, I think the two Bronco players who hit him, I believe they did get fined, but they got to take care of that during the game. They can't be doing that after the game. That might have cost the Panthers that game. And I need Cam Newton to do good. He's my fantasy quarterback. No. So I need Cam Newton to step up, even if he's getting hit, and get me some fantasy points. Here's my takeaway. Only two running backs ran for over 100 yards in week one. Yeah, what the heck? This, the NFL is completely changing, whereas rushing is huge in college football. Not so much in the NFL. It seems like these defensive players are too big, too aggressive, and the running backs. However, D'Angelo Williams, 33 years old, he ran like he was 23. Yeah. Ran for over 140 yards All in the first game against Redskins. your Redskins. All right, NFL fantasy. Jake, I wasn't going to play fantasy this year until you convinced me. How would week one go for you in fantasy football? I didn't do too well. My running back, like you talked about, Todd Gurley, who, again, I wasn't here last year. I was in the Philippines, so NFL isn't even mentioned over there. Todd Gurley was all the talk that I heard coming into yeah. this season. I was able to get him on my fantasy team, and I think he had, like, four points. Yeah. So that was a disappointment. AP, Adrian Peterson, was a disappointment. Des Bryant, who everyone talked up, he was also a disappointment. So put things short, I didn't do too well this week. Well, the top quarterbacks right now are Drew Brees and Andrew Luck. Do you think they stay as the top quarterbacks? In fantasy football? They did get the most fantasy points, but they both lost. I mean, you're Colts. Andrew Luck played well, but they didn't win. Yeah, no. I don't get why you're giving me so much crap <laughs> about the Redskins. Your Colts didn't even win. But, but it was it, close. It was close. It, was it close. wasn't a thumping that your okay, boy yeah, Kirk Cousins took against Big Belly Ben, as you referred to him last yeah, week. He, uh, what running fat. backs were D'Angelo Williams and Lamar Miller. Do you think they stay as the top running backs in the league in fantasy I do. football? I do. You know, and like you said, no running back stepped up, so someone's got to step up in week two or three because I got to fix my fantasy team. All right, I need some advice then. I have the Broncos as my defense. The Vikings and the 49ers were the top defenses. Do you think there was kind of a fluke in week one, or do I stay with the Broncos? I think that's pretty legit. You know, they have a lot of players coming back. They have a new offense, but their defense staying the same. Their defense rocked it last year, and I think they're going to do just as well. Who is. Why does she. Don't worry, we'll get her after the show. Okay, this is probably the most important segment of the show so far. Jake, give me your top five wide receivers in the NFL right now. Okay, number one, Odell Beckham. Number two, A.J. Green. Number three, Antonio Brown. Number four, Julio Jones. And number five, Jordy Nelson. Your turn. I think it was Do you on the second episode of Buzzer Beater that... I banned you from speaking football. 
I was nice today letting you talk football, but I'm going to have to ban you again. Odell Beckham Jr. as your number one. And Jordy Nelson makes it into the top five. He just he's came off back, the ACL. Dude. Exactly. He's coming back. Like your boy Taysom Hill coming back from season-ending injury. It's and not going to work out so still, far. Okay, look, he's still my friend. I know you were in the Philippines last year, so let me educate you. Okay. And the top five. I Number one, Antonio Brown. No, he's not. He lit your Redskins up. Yeah, because the Redskins defense isn't that great. Okay, hold on. You paying Josh Norman $75 million. Do you know how many times he covered Antonio Brown? Twice. Okay. Twice. He wanted not nothing to do with Antonio Brown. I'm not Brown. the coach of the Redskins. And if- Antonio Brown, best receiver in football. Second one is a guy who's constantly disrespected, Julio Jones. Okay. He led the NFL in receiving yards last year. I think he gets looked at as a bottom tier receiver because he's got Matt Ryan as a quarterback. The Falcons aren't that good. Number three (laughs) is Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham, I'll give him the talent. He has a lot of flair. I can't stand his hair. Hey, that rhymed. It did. He is very talented, but I don't think he's better than Antonio Brown. I don't think he's better than Julio Jones. He's Mm -hmm. number three. AJ Green at number four. He went to Revis Island this Sunday and proved that Revis Island is on the downhill. And at number five, until he retires, I will always have Larry Fitzgerald in my top five in receivers. He played amazing in the Monday night game. That's how top five receivers is done. All right, dude, whatever. Okay. Like every other basketball fan, I cannot wait for the season to start. But the problem is I can't wait for the season to start until June. (laughs) Because I feel like it's going to just be a repeat of the last two years. Golden State, Cleveland in the finals. What intriguing stories, teams, matchups are you looking forward to in 2016? I'm looking forward to the New York Knicks. They're talking a lot about the Cavs and the Warriors. I'm looking forward to the New York Knicks. They've got like a whole new roster this year. They got D-Rose. If he doesn't get hurt walking to the stadium, I think he'll be <laughs> fine. And then they You're got wrong for that. That's Mello, kind of a shot. And then Joakim Noah. If those three stay healthy throughout the year, they'll be a competitor against the Cavs and the Warriors. You know that I love Stephen A. Smith. Yep. He's probably one of my favorite talents on ESPN. But when he talks about the Knicks, it's awful. I got to tell you, the Knicks are awful. They, If they're lucky, they will be the eighth seed this year. What I'm looking forward to, and I don't want to talk Warriors, I don't want to talk Cavs. Yeah. I want to talk about the Oklahoma City Thunder Just and my guy Russell Westbrook. Westbrook. The most aggressive point guard, the most athletic point guard in NBA history. Now, people are like, Okay, Kevin Durant left and Serge Ibaka left, so the Thunder are going to be a bottom tier team in the Western Conference. They went out and got Victor Oladipo in the offseason. Victor Oladipo, a very talented shooting guard. I played high school basketball with him. They also got Steven Adams, who I think is a complete beast. NBA is going to be something very interesting to look forward to in 2016. I got my Oklahoma City Thunder causing some problems in the NBA. Thanks again for turning into Buzzer Beater. Again, oh, these stupid producers and editors are throwing all my stuff at us. Be sure to catch your BYU Hawaii Seasiders in action tomorrow at the BYU Hawaii soccer field. Our men's team play at 12.30, and then our women's volleyball is in action at 7.30 at the George Q. Kent Activity Center. For Jake McCleary, I'm Mick Miller. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Hey!